Wisconsin's new electoral maps will be submitted to the Supreme Court next month. And a new lawsuit has been filed with the goal of removing former President Trump from next year's primary ballot. CBS 58's Emily Fannin, Wisp Politics editor J.R. Ross, discuss that and more in tonight's Capital Connection. This week we begin with the Wisconsin Brewer who is seeking to file a complaint that would remove former President Donald Trump off the 2024 presidential primary ballot here right here in Wisconsin. Now we're talking about Kurt Bagstad. He is the owner of Monaca Brewing Company and he filed a complaint with the Wisconsin Elections Commission but it was quickly rejected. One of the main reasons is that WEC doesn't really make decisions about who is on the ballot but we heard from Kurt earlier in the week saying he, knew, he expected this decision to happen and he wants to first start a uh, a lawsuit in Dane County Court with the hopes of it getting up to the state Supreme Court. Now his argument is based on a series of challenges that we've seen across the state that argue a provision in the 14th Amendment makes Trump ineligible to be on multiple states ballots. But these these challenges, Jared, have been largely unsuccessful in a series of states, but there are two states that have been unique, which is Colorado and most recently Maine, who do who have made decisions that they believe Trump should not be on the ballot. But ultimately, where this challenge is going to go in multiple states is ultimate to the U.S. Supreme Court. So what are some of the things that you're watching for and do you think this could carry some weight here in the battleground state? Uh, one, there's already been a lawsuit filed in Dane County Circuit Court back in end of August trying to keep Trump off the ballot. It has moved nowhere since then. Two, politically, it's interesting to think, you know, what Donald Trump did post-2020 obviously violated norms what we see from presidents who have lost and are outgoing. The question is, has it, he crossed the legal boundary that prevents being the ballot. The courts will decide that. That's an interesting thing, but politically, it makes him somewhat of a martyr for supporters to see these things going on, and it muddies the water about election interference. Democrats talk a lot about 2020 and how Trump tried to overturn the election. He's an insurrectionist, but when you have this stuff going on for Republicans, it kind of gives him cover to make an argument of, well, look, these guys are doing this. This is stuff that's not supposed to be going on. Uh, looking back at Wisconsin, though, Next week, there's a committee that meets uh, every four years to set the primary ballot. Um, usually, it's not very controversial. We'll probably watch it this year just in case. But they set the ballot. They're supposed to be basically, the Republicans and Democrats get together. They say, we want these guys and gals on the ballot. End of story. There's not much controversy to it. But this year, uh, a little something extra to watch, you know, just because. All right. And also this week, we learned that UW Lacrosse's Chancellor Joe Gao has been fired by the UW system uh, in a vote this week. And it comes after they found that he was fired because he was producing porn videos with his wife. Now, looking at the larger issue here, we heard from Gao who said that he argued that this his firing was a violation of his First Amendment rights, which is free speech. And what we want to talk about is kind of this has been a growing issue here in the state capital among Republicans who have largely tried to target free speech speech issues on UW campuses. So the question is, did he cross a line? The courts will decide that. But politically, don't forget, Robin Voss, the Assembly Speaker, struck a deal with University of Wisconsin leaders for this whole package of like pay raises and money for bonding, $800 million overall in exchange for curtailing diversity, equity, inclusion type positions. That deal was not with the state Senate, however. We've had a couple senators, Republicans say they were okay with it, they liked where it was going. But we've now been hearing more from people going, okay, wait a second, this guy was doing this. This should nix that entire deal. We should clamp down on what's going on. It doesn't help UW's cause that something like this going on politically when you're trying to get approved from the legislature for $800 million in various things. And looking ahead to next week, we mentioned this on last week's show, JR, uh, the state Supreme Court ruled four to three that the GOP-controlled legislature needs to draw new legislative maps before the 2024 election. We're talking about the redistricting lawsuit here. Now, we know Republicans are likely to appeal this case to the U.S. Supreme Court, but there's some magic timelines here that lawmakers and the governor need to meet, and that's first is January 12th. That's when the court Court wants both sides to file new maps to the court and what are some of the things I guess that you're watching for with these tight timelines coming down well big thing is can Republicans delay things so we saw this week a motion for reconsideration which basically is a, a plaintiff going or party going to court say look you got it wrong you should redo this whole thing over again now I've covered a lot of court cases in my career telling a judge he or she or they were wrong doesn't often work you know it's a good try sometimes but what they're saying is you ignored our arguments, you've set too tight of a timeline, and our due process rights were violated. They want it delayed until 2026. They want fuller uh, exercise for the court to try and flush out some issues. 
But what's key in there is what they're teeing up. We talked about this before. They're going to go to the U.S. Supreme Court at some point. They have a couple of paths to get there. One is Janet Protasiewicz, the liberal justice who heard the case, the $10 million from the Democratic Party of Wisconsin, saying that she shouldn't have heard it. Two is this due process argument that basically the state Supreme Court of Wisconsin is in such a rush to put new maps in place in a pre-judge process that they violate Republicans' rights. If you read through that motion, it cites a number of conservative U.S. Supreme Court justices and their past opinions on this topic. It is basically a hint to everybody, look, we're going there at some point. This is one way to get there is a due process argument. Definitely something we'll be keeping tabs on. That's it for this week. Thanks so much for joining us.